for a cold air ideal Brayton cycle. The thermal efficiency is only a function of the pressure ratio, the P2 over P1, and that K, the ratio of specific heat. State 1 is the inlet to the compressor, 2 is the outlet, the uh, compressor, state 3 is the inlet to the turbine, and 4 is the outlet. And we have to know, oh, the Q's and the W's, isn't this the work? And likewise for the burner, C sub P, delta T, and for the turbine and for the heat exchanger. Uh, T1 is lower than T4, hence this is going to be negative, so the sign works. Likewise, the work of the compressor, T1 is less than T2, so that will be a negative quantity. So all of these things are the pieces of the puzzle that go into deriving this simple equation. All right, one other piece of information that we need is that. Yeah, for isentropic ideal gas, constant specific heat, boom, the, the, the temperature change is related to the pressure ratio to the K minus 1 over K. So let's start this derivation to drive this equation. We start and we say the thermal efficiency is the ratio of the net work, W net, divided by the Q in. The Q in is in this burner. All right. You can replace work net by Q net in Q burner because work net is equal to Q net. All right. Q net would be the Q of the burner plus the Q of this heat exchanger. Now, I know that this is a negative in here, so I'm not going to put a minus sign in front of that Q. It's, it's the sum of those two Qs. And then we divide by Q burner. Okay, so now it's 1 plus Q of the heat exchanger divided by Q of the burner. I start to make it look like, see that 1 sitting out there? Like the formula that we're getting to. The thermal efficiency is equal to 1 plus or minus something else. So that's good. So now I replace what is the Q for the heat exchanger. That Q for the heat exchanger, that's why I worked it out down here, is the C sub P, T1 minus T4. And then for the burner, it's C sub P, T3 minus T2. Look good? So we can cancel our C sub P's. Now it's just a ratio of temperature differences there. And because the T1 is lower than T4, I'm going to bring that minus sign out and switch the order. So this is T4 minus T1, and then this is T3 minus T2. I want, that's a little baby step right there, but that's how we get the minus sign out there. All right. At this point, I need to uh, maybe move up here for a little extra room. And so we're going to have the thermal efficiency is equal to 1 minus, and then we're going to have this ratio. The, the numerator and the denominator, every term in it, and divide by T1. So you'll have T1, you'll have a minus, you'll have a T4, and you're going to divide by T1. Okay. Down here we're going to have a T2, and we're going to divide by T1. And you have a minus in front of that, and then you have T3, and you have T1. Does that look reasonable? I just took every term in the numerator, denominator, divided by T1. And we left a little extra room right in here and right in here, so I could do a little algebra. So what I'll do is I'll move that T1 over here, and I'll say that this is equal to T4 divided by T3, T3 divided by T2, and then T2 divided by T1. Correct? Can you tell I've done this a few times? Yeah, okay, so I'm trying to give you an efficient derivation of this equation so I don't have to go to another slide. But if I hadn't done this a few times, do you think I would be doing it this easy? No, not at all. Likewise, right here, we're going to put a T2 and a T2. Algebraically, it's good. True. Have used this information down in here, but we haven't used this information yet, have we? So T2 divided by T1, that's equal to 
the P2 divided by P1 to the K minus 1 over K. That's going from 1 to 2 across that compressor. It's isentropic, S equal to constant, ideal gas, constant specific heat, all that's embedded in that equation. How about, a, can I use that equation for the expansion through the turbine? It's also isentropic, ideal gas, constant specific heat. Could I say that uh, T4 uh, divided by T3 is equal to P4 over P3 to the K minus 1 over K? Is P4 equal to P1? Yeah. And is P3 equal to P2? Yeah. When I multiply T2 over T1 by T4 over T3, they cancel each other. It's, it's, one is the reciprocal of the other. So it's equal to 1. That was a big observation. So now our thermal efficiency is equal to, we're going to have uh, 1 minus T3 divided by T2 minus 1. That's still in the numerator. The denominator, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, you know what, I have this T2 over T1, this T2 over T1 in both terms. I'm going to pull those out. So I'll pull out the T2 over T1 in both of those terms. And then I'll be left with, look at that, T3 over T2 minus 1. Yeah, you're laughing because there's no way anybody could do this like I'm doing it unless they've done it a few times already, right? <laughs> Those two cancel, don't they? And so now we're left with the thermal efficiency, 1 minus 1 over T2 over T1. Hey, <laughs> I know what that is. That's P2 over P1 raised to the K minus 1 over K. We box it because... That's what we set out to show, didn't we? If you want to increase the thermal efficiency, what should you do to the pressure ratio? Make it as large as possible. It's very similar to the auto and diesel cycle. You want more performance out of that auto cycle, a higher thermal efficiency, increase the compression ratio. Here for the Brayton, increase the pressure ratio. So as engineers, that's what they try and do. And over the years, those have really crept up in gas turbines. The pressure ratios have really gone up.